Okay, uh, thanks for having me. My name is Naotoke. I'm an artist and researcher. I'm going to talk about AI as alternative intelligence and human creativity in music. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm a founder of Cosmo, a Tokyo based art co collective, and I also organize a computational creativity laboratory at Keio University in Japan. And my main question in this talk is this is AI capable of creating something new or original and um, maybe more precisely uh, is AI capable of helping us create something new and original rather than imitating what we humans have already created and so here uh, I'm not in interested in imitating what we have created and also I'm not interested in optimizing and streamlining the music making process to make more hit songs more economically. Uh, instead, uh, I want to make music nobody ever listened to with the help of AI. So these are uh, today's agenda. Uh, I'm going to talk about three topics. And the first one is the importance of misusable AI tools. And when you look back the history of music and technology, you realize that it, it is in fact the history of misused and misappropriated new technologies. And one of the recurring patterns is when an artist uses new technology in a way that, uh, uh, in, in a way the original inventor didn't intend or imagine, it is when a new form of musical expression emerged. And I think the turntable and the sampler uh, prime examples and uh, basically you are not supposed to touch and move by the record right and samplers were invented to imitate expensive physical instruments such as pianos and violins and the inventors didn't expect their expect their users to appropriate somebody else's music such as arm and brakes and funky drummers so I think we need to admit that uh, technologists, or in this case AI researchers or AI engineers, are not the one who originate new music styles. And when it comes to AI musical tools, uh, I see two extreme uh, ends of spectrum. So on one hand, uh, we have very well packaged commercial tools, and so you can get a complete song or a complete melody sequence with just one click and on the other hand on the other side of the spectrum you have very programmer oriented tools so you need to install python and pip and tensorflow and by the way don't forget cuda uh, i think uh, for artists it's very very challenge to uh, use uh, these uh, programmer oriented uh, tools unless the artist have some programming background um, and on the other hand uh, on the other side of spectrum uh, if the pack the tool is too well packaged then it's also difficult to misuse and imagine uh, if you have a software tool for generating complete song with one click, then are you creating the songs or the, or the software developer? That's questionable. So I think we need somebody, I mean, we need something in the middle. We need tools which artists can use uh, freely and more importantly, they can misuse and this is uh, one simple uh, device I created in this principle uh, so this is um, Ableton Live uh, device for rhythm generation uh, it's available on github and what it does it is uh, it allows you to train your own model on Ableton Live, so you don't need to install Python or TensorFlow. And 
I, I think you can misuse the device by uh, training your own model with your own custom data set. Uh, so you can train your model with your uh, obscure MIDI data set or something. Then you can try different uh, types of rhythm generation. And I'm working on other tools with the same principle, so please stay tuned. And our second topic is this, uh, embracing the uncertainty AI brings. So this is a visualization of uh, latent rhythm patterns in a trained model. Yeah, so it's good. Uh, you can try different uh, type of training data set and maybe you can misuse and create something unique but still uh, it's I think it's safe to say you are basically imitating human creation with the device and AI model so in the uh, Next project I want to introduce, uh, we combined this rhythm generation model with uh, sound classification model, uh, so another neural network. Then we ended up uh, creating a website called Neural Beatbox. And what we did is to integrate sound classification model with uh, rhythm generation model and generated rhythm patterns will be played with the instant drum kit the sound classification model created as the recorded sound files and you can share your session with your friend on the internet mm. so your friends can join mm. and record more additional sound and mix them. Yeah, uh, as you can see, it's I think intended to be uh, fun experiment uh, it's not meant to be a serious you know um, musical creation tool and of course the sound classification of AI is not perfect but that what we wanted uh, I we wanted to introduce some sort of uncertainty to create something unique or maybe sometimes a little bit bizarre or weird but that's the beauty of this project. And the other project where we embrace the uncertainty of AI is this AI DJ project. Uh, it's a back-to-back -back DJ session with me and um, AI DJ. And AI DJ occasionally selects and plays unexpected songs. But this uncertainty leads to very interesting and exciting DJ performance. And when you try to create something new and original, uh, you basically want to branch out from the conventions, right? And we hope it will be a manifestation of creativity, but from the conventional perspective, conventional point of view, it is a mistake or error. So we need to know how to embrace mistakes and we need to know uh, which mistakes are interesting. So not all mistakes or not all, all errors are uh, useful and interesting. So we need to know which one is good. And the last part uh, of this lecture is uh, how to push AI to the edge.
and let's get back to the original question but here I wanna ask is AI itself capable of, of creating something new and original uh, in this uh, purpose I used uh, generative adversarial networks or GANs and it is famous framework so I'm not gonna explain it in detail uh, it's well known for the capability of generating very realistic uh, human faces but here I want to use it for again rhythm patterns but in this case uh, I'm not trying to uh, use AI to imitate uh, human creation uh, human created rhythm patterns instead I want to use GANs framework to uh, generate very unique uh, original rhythm pattern and in this uh, project first I try to add a conditional input so that you can condition on a musical style or genre uh, such as house techno hip hop drum bass and you can specify uh, the style of generated rhythm pattern So this is one uh, simple example and this is again a simple I think break break beat rhythm uh, it's nothing new and nothing unique and so here I added one more discriminator to this uh, GAN model and uh, uh, what it what this uh, new discriminator does is to try to classify uh, like musical style of generated rhythm pattern and the generator is uh, trying to confuse the additional discriminator so that it can generate uh, realistic rhythm patterns but uh, rhythm patterns that don't belong to any existing musical styles in the training data set so these are uh, some examples of generated rhythm patterns and how does it sound to you uh, for me it's unique and still uh, it's danceable I think and so hopefully uh, this kind of uh, tool or framework uh, will lead to a new musical uh, style or new musical no, new dance music genre that's my uh, uh, dream and here I have a, a favorite quote of Scott Adams uh, he's a very famous uh, comic writer and it goes like this uh, creativity is allowing yourself to make mistakes and artists knowing which ones to keep I think this uh, quote resonates very well with what I introduced so far and I believe uh, AI is a tool that helps you to make interesting min mistakes, meaningful, amusing mistakes or amusing uh, deviations from the convention. And, and consequently, uh, it helps you to create uh, something new and original. In that purpose, you need to know which ones to keep. Uh, that's human creativity. I think I believe and I published a book on this topic uh, I introduced uh, today and I'm working on the, the uh, English translation and hopefully it will be available in early 2022 okay thank you very much if you have any questions comments please ping me on uh, Twitter or uh, uh, via contact, contact me via email so thank you very much 
メッシーありがとうございました。